The James Webb Space Telescope is now the most powerful and high-resolution telescope that has ever been put into space. The James Webb is an absolute marvel of design and engineering that will allow our astronomers and astrophysicists to see farther into the universe than ever before. It can even see backwards in time thanks to high-resolution infrared imaging capabilities. From its design, to launch, to first captured image, this has been one of the most complex projects ever taken on by NASA, up there with the first moon landing. So today, we are going over everything that you need to know about the James Webb Space Telescope, how it was made, how it works, and what this game-changing instrument will discover. So, let's get going. This is the Space Race. The James Webb Space Telescope has been a long time in the making, about 25 years. They first started developing this telescope idea in the late 90s with the plan to launch by 2007. That didn't work, and it's probably for the best, because the telescope was completely redesigned in 2007 to what we see now. If it had launched in the original time frame, then there's no way that the telescope would be able to accomplish the feats that we are looking at today. A lot of the reason that this thing is so terrifyingly complex is the sheer size of it. While the current Hubble Space Telescope has a mirror dish of 2.4 meters in diameter, the James Webb mirror takes that up to 6.5 meters. The web dish consists of 18 hexagon mirrors that are made from gold-plated beryllium, which is a very special, rare earth metal that is six times stronger than steel, while being one-third the weight of aluminum. The gold plating is ultra-thin, at just 1,000 atoms of thickness. Gold is the best-known reflector for infrared light, and that's why they chose to use it. All of this is the reason that the sticker price for the telescope has reached something around $10 billion. Then there's the even more gigantic sunshade on the bottom of the telescope's structure. This is five layers of another crazy material called Kapton, which is a synthetic film made by DuPont that can remain stable over a wide range of temperatures from cryogenic to superheated. Each layer is coated with aluminum, and the two outer layers that are closest to the sun will have an additional coating of silicon. Each layer of the shield will progressively cool the sun's rays by dissipating the heat out into the vacuum of space, and that keeps the telescope itself at a perfect temperature of negative 223 degrees Celsius. This entire unit was assembled in one of the largest clean rooms on Earth at the Goddard Space Flight Center. The engineers then had to fold the massive array down to its ultra-compact size for travel and eventual launch inside the fairing of an Ariane 5 rocket. The telescope then had to be transported nearly 6,000 kilometers across land and sea in a specialized shipping container to its launch pad in French Guiana. NASA had to keep the details of the Webb's ocean crossing a guarded secret because they were afraid that it might get hijacked by pirates in the Caribbean Sea. On Christmas Day 2021, the James Webb successfully launched and began a long and difficult journey to operation. As painstaking and complicated as it was to build the machine and fold it up into a rocket fairing, the process of unfolding it again in space while 930,000 miles away from the Earth was a nerve-wracking experience for anyone following along. The infrared sensitivity of the James Webb is what makes it so complicated. That's why it has to be kept cold behind that massive sun shield. Any interference from the sun, or even the earth and the moon, will throw off the instrument. But the infrared vision is essential to our mission to look backwards in time and into the hearts of developing planets, stars, and galaxies. The only way to see the most ancient light in the galaxy is on the infrared spectrum. So the crazy thing about light is that it never disappears or ceases to exist it just keeps radiating out to infinity, and that includes all of the light that was created at the moment of the Big Bang. But as the universe expands and the space between objects stretches out, that light shifts further and further to the infrared spectrum. The other advantage to infrared vision is that it can see through clouds of cosmic dust and gas, and it's usually in the middle of those clouds that all the good stuff happens. 
pretty much every object in the universe starts off as a big spinning disk of rocks and dust and gas that all starts to pull together in the center to form a planetary system or even a solar system. We've never really been able to see what's going on in the middle before. We can start to get an idea of how matter organizes itself on large scales. Luckily for all of us, the unfolding process of the James Webb was a total success. This process included 139 mechanical actuator motors just to unfold and stretch the sun shield into its final shape. This was followed by a month-long process to align each one of those golden hexagon mirror segments until they began to function as one continuous dish. Scientists are able to control the James Webb instruments from a location on the ground called the Space Telescope Institute. This is the Mission Operations Center. Commands from the ground are sent to the telescope via the Deep Space Network, and the telescope sends data back in the same way. Through this communication process, the scientists on the ground were able to perfectly align each mirror segment on the James Webb dish to concentrate all of that reflected light into the secondary mirror on the end of that tripod assembly, and then onto one single place on the near-infrared camera. This is the primary imaging device on board the telescope. And the result is this first high-resolution, perfectly focused image of the star known as HD 84406. The star itself is of little interest. It's just a test subject but it is interesting to know that this particular star is 100 times fainter than what we can see with the human eye, and through the James Webb, it is now clear as day. We can even compare the James Webb to a previous generation of space telescope. Here is the exact same star and region of space taken by the Spritzer Infrared Telescope that was first launched in 2003, and then compare that to the first James Webb result. From a blurry, pixelated mess, to crystal clear focus. That's the kind of power this telescope delivers. The current resolution from the James Webb has exceeded all expectations, reaching 70 milliarc seconds at a wavelength of two microns. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds cool. A more practical explanation would be if you imagine a 360 degree view of the night sky as you can see it with your own eyes. Out of those 360 degrees, the full moon would occupy about half of one degree of view. The James Webb can resolve objects in the sky that are just 0.00002 degrees across. This is the highest amount of resolution that is physically possible with the James Webb hardware, the best case scenario result. Now that we know this telescope works the way it was intended, let's talk a bit about what that intention really is. Scientists want to know what the universe looked like shortly after the Big Bang that created everything took place. We can't see all the way back to the very beginning, but it's believed that the James Webb can detect infrared light rays that date back to just about 100 million years after the Big Bang event. They want to observe how galaxies form and change over time, track the life cycles of stars from their birth to their explosive deaths, and seek out new planets. This is made possible by the combination of high resolution and infrared vision that only the James Webb has so far been able to offer. Infrared light shines through the gaseous, dusty veil that fills the voids in our universe and allows us to see into the dense regions of space for the first time. These are the places where stars are born. Another amazing use case for the James Webb is going to be looking at exoplanets. We've already been able to do this a little bit with a method called transit spectroscopy. Basically, we focus on a particular star and wait for a planet to pass in front of it. By measuring the changes in wavelengths as the light from the star passes through the planet's atmosphere, we can actually get a pretty good idea of what elements exist in that atmosphere. So far, we've only really been able to do this with big planets that are very close to their stars. But the new Webb telescope will be able to get more detailed readings from smaller planets at greater distances, opening up orders of magnitude more possibilities to detect alien life. That could be as subtle as finding a planet that has oxygen and methane present to indicate that something could be alive there. 
Or we could even find more definitive signs of a civilization on an exoplanet. For example, we know that there are certain gases that are only produced by industry and not by nature. If we can find those somewhere else in the universe, then we can say almost for certain that there is other developed life out there. We might even be able to detect artificial light on an exoplanet as another sure sign of advanced civilizations. The James Webb can also be turned onto objects much closer to home within our own solar system. The telescope can give us high resolution imaging of cloud formations on Mars and Venus, allow us to track weather patterns on gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. There are so many interesting comets and other things that pass us by that we can finally view in high definition. Remember when that Oumuamua object came flying into our solar system from god knows where and we were all freaking out wondering if it was a weird asteroid or a space iceberg or an alien spaceship? The web is going to be extremely helpful for getting a better look at weird transitory objects like that as they pass us by. And that is the story of the James Webb Space Telescope so far. Like we've said, this is just the beginning only one complete image from the telescope's primary imaging device. By sometime this summer, the James Webb should be fully operational and ready to conduct some hardcore scientific investigation. What would you want to see the James Webb pointed at first? Let us know in the comments section below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.